let's look at boxing. It used to be a really big deal back when .NET first came out because we didn't have generics. But now that we have generics, boxing isn't so much as a big deal, but it's still there, and we should be aware of boxing when it happens, and it could actually hinder performance of your application if you don't pay attention to it. Or if, if it does hinder your performance and you use a profiler to show you where that performance hit is, you'll understand uh, what's going on. Just as I did in previous videos, let me draw uh, the with a smaller ink there. Let me draw the uh, memory. This is again this is just kind of an arbitrary way of drawing RAM and we know that RAM is divided into a stack and a heap and here in main I am going to say int i gets 5 and then I'm going to say object o gets i. Alright well when I first say int i gets 5 that makes room on the stack here for i, it stuffs the value 5 in that 32 bits. Then I say object o gets assigned what is in i. So here is o, and o is a reference. That's an e. <laughs> o is a reference, and since it's a reference, it has to reference things out in heap land. It can't reference the stack. And so it looks like, you know, if this is going to reference, it's going to reference to something down here. But that's not legal in any way, shape, or form in C Sharp. You must reference something in the heap. So how how does this work? Because this certainly works, and it builds. I can say console right line O here, and control F5, and it builds and succeeds, and we get the output 5. So what exactly is going on here. Well, this is where, this is boxing essentially, and it has nothing to do with the sport. The runtime, the CLR says, oh, okay, you want to assign O to this value type that's stuck on the stack, and O must reference something out on the heap. So what the runtime does without really telling you is it, it makes what it's called a box, which is a fancy way of saying it goes, it grabs some RAM, it puts some info up in here, we won't be concerned about quite yet, but there's some info, and then it also puts the value of the 5 right there. Alright, so I is a separate entity from, oh, I was referencing something out here on the heap, I can prove that. Let's console right line uh, I and O, but before we do that, I am going to say I gets 20. Alright, so if, if O was referencing I, then both of these would print 20 to the screen, but I'm telling you that O is referencing this boxed object out here. We'll see 5 for O, and we will see a 20, a 20 for I. So let's control a 5, run that, prove that that is the behavior we see, and there you go. Now say I want to change the object that O is referencing. Say I want to change this value out here. All right. Well, as far as the box is concerned, there's no way with this integer have the way it's boxed that I can modify this value. So if I do want to change O, let's say O O gets 99, and then console right line O. Can you imagine what's going to happen in that case? Can you pause the video and think through what's going to happen when uh, when I say O gets 99. How is my diagram here on the right going to change? Go ahead, pause the video, think about it. Okay, let me control a five this. You see, yes, certainly O on this last print is a 99, but we didn't modify this value here, this 5. Okay, what happened is that the runtime again saw 99. Oh, that's an integer. It's a value type, and you're assigning it to a reference. All right, and how do we do reference something? Well, we need to box it, so it creates a new box. All right, all right with some meta information up here. Don't worry too much about it. And, and inside that box, it's a boxed integer, so here, here's the 99. And then we assign that to O, so O is no longer going to point to this box. It will point to the new box. And now you can see the old box is open for garbage collection. All right, That's one downside about boxing, is if you do a lot of these boxes, and you're not paying attention and assigning value types to references, then you create a lot of boxes and that puts pressure on the garbage collector. One, because the garbage collector it has to maintain uh, a consistent heap. It also could defrag the heap. That's also part of, of uh, 
Garbage collecting is to compress the heap once in a while. Defrag it if you've ever defragged your hard drive. The same idea happens with RAM. We get fragmented as we allocate and allocate and allocate and, and you know free this thing up. But then I want to allocate some more. So we'll allocate something bigger here and something bigger there and a small thing here. And then all of a sudden I want to allocate something this big. But there's no... I mean, this this thing won't fit here, but it might if I move this here and compress this here and you know change those things. I'll probably be able to make room for it, and that's same idea with the garbage collector. It has to compress that so we can, uh, even though there's there is enough room to allocate this thing, we just need to crunch everything together. Everybody, if you sit on a bench at a venue or a movie and they say everybody scoot into the middle, you know, make room for people on the end. That's what they're doing there. They they're compressing their their uh, room, right? And in case of what we're doing here, the same idea. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, what what I want to do for the next video, I'm going to give you a little puzzle and then let you kind of work this on your own, and we'll go. We will go through the answer to this puzzle in a minute, but uh, or in the next video. But let me give you the puzzle before I leave here. I want to say int i gets five. Object o gets i. And then I will. I, I, I want to. I want to increase the value of the boxed object object by one. Okay, integers we're used to that. I I plus I plus plus. But I want to do something O plus plus. I want to increment the value that is referenced by O here. All right. So think about that, and we'll talk about it in the next video.